Today we're going to talk about how to install an extruder with a cooling fan on the Big Tree Tech SKR version 2. Now I need to talk about a couple of things. First of all, the extruder over here functions on obviously a heater cartridge and then a thermistor. So you can tell that the wiring for these is the thermistor here and the hot end is actually these ferruled connectors that I placed on for safety. I also placed on for safety ferrule connectors on the power supply. Now in this video I'm actually going to be using a 12 volt power supply and I have it on direct power for the jumper. So let me explain a couple of things around the board and then I'll show you the pin out diagram. Over here we have our hot ends and we have our power supply right here for the board logic. Now I marked red and no marking for voltage and ground so that I know which is which. And I did the same on these because sometimes they can be used for other things. But when you're doing an extruder, it doesn't matter for what the polarity is for your hot end cartridge. Also over here we have our fans. So we have fan 0, 1, and 2. So the other thing that we need to know about is our actual thermistors. So we have our heat bed, then we have our first extruder, and our second extruder. So let me show you this in the actual pinout diagram so it makes more sense. So over here you can see that it says hot end zero, which is this one right here. And then you have hot end one. That's for your second extruder if you're using one. Now they normally function off a stepper motor, but I'm not going to show you that part right now. And then down here we have our thermistor connection. So you see TB for thermal bed. Then you see TH zero, which corresponds to our hot end. And then the same thing is true for our TH1, which is over here. So let's go back over and set this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use fan 3, which I'll show you real quick here. The third fan is actually fan 2 because it counts from 0. So we're going to use that and we're going to note the pin. So in this case, the pin number is PB5. That's going to be important in a minute. And I may have to go back and recheck it. So let's start with our actual configuration. So I'm going to take the fan and I'm actually going to plug it in over here. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop this out. And the reason I'm popping it out is so that I can actually populate it easier. So you can basically loosen it, which I've already done. So I'm going to slide these in here and I'm going to then tighten it down with a screwdriver. And this is so it doesn't come out while printing because the printer can vibrate and the actual ferrule connectors protect it against having wires that are loose. So once this is actually tightened down and in there good, we're going to then slide it back in like so. Once that's in there, we have to actually connect our thermistor which is going to be the way to tell temperature on it. So we're going to put it in there. So it looks like we got almost everything hooked up except for the power. So we're going to do the same over here. We're going to slide this in and we're going to tighten it down. And then we're going to slide in the actual ground side and do the same. And those are in there nice and good. So to load the firmware, what we're going to have to do is actually pop out the actual drive here and place it in our reader. Then we'll place this in the computer and you may hear a beep. And then over on the computer, we'll go over to the desktop and we'll bring up VS Code. Now inside VS Code, we're actually going to open up the actual Marlin software. So I'm going to click on open folder go to my downloads folder and currently I don't have it unzipped. So I'm going to go over to the folder over here 
go to my downloads, right click because this is recently downloaded. It's version 2.0.9.1. And I'm going to extract all. Now this may take a few moments to do. So while that's going on, we'll go back over to VS Code in a second. But uh, let's see what we've got here inside VS Code. Inside VS Code, if you haven't already installed it, um, I do have other things that I can do for Marlin Auto Build, but you need to have platformio.ini, and that'll be in our playlist at the bottom of the description of this video. You'll see there's a playlist link that'll help you find that. So now that this is at fully extracted, I'm going to click on Open Folder, go to the Downloads folder, then the Marlin folder, then the next Marlin folder, and select the folder. So your environment should look like this now. Now this is the chipset that they default to being the Mega 2560. That's not the one we're using. We're going to have to change that in a moment. So I'm going to go over to the Marlin folder for a second then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside here, I'm gonna search on skr underscore two or v2, and that'll bring us to the RevV board. Now, everyone should be using RevV by now because they fixed the actual issue with the first RevA board, so always use RevV. It has to do with a fix for the TMC steppers. And I'll leave a link in the description that you can read up on that to verify you have the right ones. So let's minimize this for a second. And let's note the STM32F4 because that's going to be important in a moment so we can find our default environment. We'll minimize source. We'll go over to configuration.h and we'll search on motherboard. Right here, we're going to highlight the ramps board and paste our board over it. Then I'm going to scroll up and change the serial port to negative one. And then I'm going to scroll down a bit and find the actual extruder. Now, in this case, we're only using one extruder. So we're going to leave that alone. If you were to use multiple extruders, then you may have in one case where it's a single nozzle but you have two inputs, this is what you would use. But I'll cover that in a future tutorial. So I'm gonna scroll down and find some other information in here that's gonna be relevant to us in just a second. So one of the important things that we have to worry about is actually the thermistor type. So they give you a list of different thermistors right here. In this case, I'm gonna use number eight because that's the one I always use. But if you can look up your thermistor's description, you can then pick or select the one that's correct for you. But down here, we have it for our temperature sensors. These are all our extruders that we could possibly use based on the board that we're working with. In this case, I think you can only go up to three. And there's a special tutorial I have to do to show you how to do the third. But maybe in the future I'll do that. But for now, I'm going to show you that we changed that to 8. Now, currently, we're not using anything having to do with the heat bed sensor or any of the other types of sensors that they have here. But those are also thermistor-based things that you can pick from the list above. So now that we have that figured out, we do have to look around. There's a couple other things. I'm going to avoid talking about a lot of the uh, basic information here. Um, I will tell you there is a minimum and a maximum that you can set for your thermistor if you have something that's sensitive according to its data sheet. But in this case, we're just going to stick with what we've got for what we're working with. Down here, they have PID settings. This is how you tune your hot end to the temperature that your thermistor is sensing so that you can control flow better. This is more an advanced tutorial that I won't talk about right now. And then down here we have the same thing for bed control. I'm gonna skip over a lot of this because there's one important thing that I wanna point out and that's thermal runaway protection. Over here, you're gonna leave these alone 
at all costs because these are safety features that if something goes wrong, it will disable the power on your printer. So if you have an issue where your hot end goes off, it probably has to do with your thermistor being broken, so it's not telling temperature correctly. If that is the case, don't disable these. Fix your thermistor. So now that we have that all sorted out, I'm actually gonna go over to the advanced configuration for a second. And I'm gonna search on extruder space cooling space, whoop, sorry about that guys. Let's do that again. Control F, extruder space, cooling space fans and that'll bring us to the category that we're working in so over here we need to know what the pin out number is in this case we can just go over to our pin out diagram and we can pick it out because we know that it's going to be pb5 but if we didn't know that what we could do also is actually search in source then go to our pins folder, then find our particular processor, which is STM32F, and then find it in the list over here. Now I've gone over this before, so I'm not gonna go over it too long, but we're gonna look for the red B. Now the red B says, go find this file that's common, which is up here. And then you can search for your fan pins in here. But now that we actually know what the fan pin nomenclature is off the pinout diagram, we don't have to do that. So we're going to go back over to configuration.h. We're going to replace the negative 1 with PB5 from what we found in the pinout diagram over here for our pin. This will go on when our fan temperature reaches a certain temperature on the thermistor. So in this case, down here, you can adjust your temperatures, like your fan speed in this case. I can change this to 200 for the auto fan speed. Full speed is 255, so the range is from 1 to 255, but your fan probably won't turn at about 150, I'm guesstimating, but depending upon your fan and voltage, in this case, I believe I'm running a 12 volt fan it won't turn on if the voltage is too low. So now that we have that set, let's uh, go back and actually straighten out what we need to do for default environment. So I'm gonna minimize these folders and I'm gonna go back over to platformio.ini and we have to fix this value. So we're gonna go to the INI folder. We're then gonna find the stm32f.ini file and we're gonna search on skr underscore two and this will bring us to our default environment so we'll copy that we'll then go back over to platform io.ini and we'll paste what we just copied right here so another thing that i need to point out that's kind of basic is in the dot pio folder they normally build the mega 2560 before they actually upload it so we're gonna clean that out with the little garbage can down here. And then we're gonna click the checkbox in order to actually set this up. So once this actually completes compiling, there'll be a file in the .pio folder over here for us that says firmware.bin. If your compile does fail, try a second time because sometimes things build out of order. And if it fails on the second time, you can always correct the very first thing that you see that failed because the other things that failed after that might be a cascade of errors. So now that this is almost complete, we're going to right click on firmware.bin and reveal in file explorer. So I'm gonna open this up and show you first our drive here is firmware.bin it's all in capital letters and it says firmware.cur this was the previous loaded build 
So they renamed the extension to cur. It is not a cursor file. So let's go back over to here and we're going to right click on firmware.bin and send it to our drive. Then we'll go over to our workbench again, pop out the drive, place it inside here. Then we'll connect the USB. Then we'll connect the power to the board so we'll energize it so you do not want to touch the board once it's energized so i'm going to plug this in and this is going to flash the firmware the beep tells us that it worked correctly so we're going to go over to pronter face and we're actually going to connect to it now currently you can see in pronter face that it says com port one so we need to find out what our actual COM port is. So I'm going to type device manager, and you might not be able to see this right away. So I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to expand this out. COM port one is default to the computer. In this case it's COM port four. So this might be in the actual dropdown. So it is in this case, so we'll connect. And as you can see, it says connecting printer is now online. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to enable the actual power that goes to the actual hot end. So you'll see this on a grid over here when I click set. And as you can see, it's gonna take a second to heat up. So the power is gonna start to rise over here once this reaches 50 degrees celsius the fan should be enabled so if you watch this closely you can see over here that it's 34 degrees at the moment now it's 41 degrees and so watch the fan any second now and that's how you set up the actual controller fan for the uh, extruder so it's the extruder cooling fan so if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time. And for those that have been donating on PayPal or subscribing to Patreon, if you're looking for a tutorial that you haven't seen yet, it may be up on Patreon before you actually see it on YouTube. So everyone take care, be safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated, and I'll talk to you later.